Hello and welcome to the very first retro review on Gamers Ireland. Now, unlike the rest of the guys here, I instead of looking at the latest cutting edge, totally brand new releases, I'm looking back, way, way back. Um, if it's pixels in it, if it's 8-bit, if it's sprites, I'm totally happy. And today I'm going to look at the Batman games. Now the reason for that is I'm kind of excited about the uh, the upcoming release of um, Arkham City. I'm actually still a bit behind my gaming. I'm still actually play about halfway through uh, Arkham Asylum at the moment and I'm loving it. So uh, hopefully I'll have it finished by, uh, I think it's October, for Arkham City. Uh, and then again in the new year you've got Team Fort no, not Team Fortress 2, uh, Gotham Imposters. Not all based on Team Fortress 2. But... Looking way, way back, the very first Batman game released on a console or computer was the Spectrum version. Uh, Spectrum game, Batman, uh, released I think 1985 or 86. Uh, it was uh, done by uh, a bunch of guys who'd previously done a game called Head Over Heels, which used a um, very kind of uh, isometric sort of view. Um, and you went around kind of puzzle solving. It used the same game engines. I mean, the idea of game engine reuses is not new, they've been doing it for years. Uh, and as you can see, it's not really the... It doesn't compare to the likes of Arkham Asylum, obviously. You've got a very tubby Adam West uh, style Batman there. And it really kind of is uh, a very basic game. You, you wander around uh, a maze, kind of uh, collecting your your, uh, your various things like your bat boots and your bat cape and so forth. Uh, as you can see, the uh, baddies are really, really camp and unusual as a koala bear. Um, so... Uh, kind of, not the kind of thing you expect to see Batman facing off against, well, maybe, you know, the old uh, 60s TV show, but uh, not the kind of thing you expect the Dark Knight to be after. But it's a good game, you basically want, oh, go ahead, get there. You wander around, you collect the various different bits and bobs, and you put together your bat, uh, your bat plane, and then you go off and you find Robin. So it's a, it's a good little adventure game. And as I said, the first, believe it or not, the first Batman game ever. So we're going to look now at the next one, which is on the Commodore 64. Now this is called uh, Batman the Creep Crusader. Creeped. Batman the Cave Crusader. Um, and again, it's a mixture of action and adventure. You basically go around uh, collecting various different items. Um, uh, for example, if I remember rightly, on the first level here, uh, there you go, there's an interface. So as you pick things up, you can use them or throw them down or what have you. Uh, if I remember rightly, you have to go and do things like get a, a disc uh, and tools to fix the back computer. And then you go off into the world fighting bad guys. Uh, it's great as well um, when you got the game that was on a tape and one side of it had one game which is basically uh, you versus the Joker and the second one had a completely different adventure which is you against the Penguin. So I mean forget about DLC or anything like that. I mean back then you know people didn't didn't string things out. You got your two games there and then ready to go. So uh, it's a good game. It was actually used as a pack-in uh, for the Commodore 64. In other words when you bought a Commodore 64 uh, it was one of the, there was, it was actually the Cape Crusader pack, I think it was called. Um, in fact, I think they used it on a few different Commodores, uh, a few different Commodore packs. So, uh, good little game. And what we're going to be doing now is looking at uh, something a little bit later on. These two games came out prior to the Batman movie, prior to the, uh, the um, uh, Tim Burton movie. And the next few games we're going to look at are kind of in the wake of that. So, uh, but they're all very different takes on it. They all, a lot of them will follow the same storyline uh, as the Batman uh, movie, but they all do it very different ways. Let's see there. Oh, the back computer's out of order. Again, this is a, this is all controlled with just a joystick and one fire button. So doing things like holding down the fire button and pushing up and down like a punch and kick, uh, pressing it on its own and pulling down will get your menu such as this. So it's a good little system, and although the only thing I'll say is that music, there's only one tune and it will drive you nuts after a while. So there's a nice option there, as you can see, to switch it off if needed. But, uh, ah, the control disc. Uh, a lot of the game was literally wandering around grabbing things uh, and trying to work out what the hell to do with them, but again, you know, a lot of early 80s adventure games are pretty similar to that. Oh, again, graphically, it's very good, and they've even got the little motif of a... Uh, the, uh, the comic book panels there, so uh, it's very well done, I've very few games since have used that kind of a uh, little graphical thing. Uh, comic song I think on the uh, Mega Drive is the only one I can think of. But anyway, next up we're going to load a PC Engine, otherwise known as the TurboGrafx-16, and it had a rather interesting uh, Batman game, so we'll just see that now in a second. Okay, PC Engine version. Now, uh, this is a bit unusual. In all the other Batman games you'll see um, tend to be platformers or beat em ups or whatever mainly. Uh, this is unusual in that it's kind of a, a maze based game. Uh, 
It reminds me a lot of Crackdown, the, the old arcade game rather than the Xbox uh, remake few, from a few years ago. But uh, basically wandering around a big city type, uh, or in this case warehouse area, uh, collecting power ups and then basically trying to find the various different, I'm assuming it's the, the Smilex uh, evil stuff from the, the Batman movie, the one that the poison that the Joker is going to spread through the city. Um, this is the first, by the way, of the games from uh, the movie that I'll be covering. This this came out a little bit after the uh, the Batman movie. Um, this is the Tim Burton one that kind of started everything off. The, um, the by the way, I probably won't have enough time to. I definitely won't have enough time to cover all the Batman games in this in this particular video. So um, I may split it up into two or three sections. So if you like the first one, you'll like the rest, and if you don't like the first one, well, yeah, give the rest a miss. <laughs> um, so basically, you run around beating up clowns, which is a noble pursuit as always. Uh, collecting your various different uh, vials of acid, uh, sorry, uh, Smilex, and uh, that's basically the game does. It's pretty good. So and it makes a good change from, uh, as I said, most of the Batman games you see are beat em ups or walking kind of shooters or what have you. So the next thing we're going to look at is uh, Batman on the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, this is done by a company called Sunsoft who had the, uh, the license to the, uh, the early Batman uh, movies. There's a little brief glimpse of Batman there. That's uh, Michael Heaton in his, his big leather outfit. So we're going to look at this. It's um, a kind of a very atypical kind of NES platformer. Uh, can you walk along? Uh, that's the, the old Batmobile. Uh, walk along, kind of beating people up. Um, uh, he's, it's, and lots of kind of platform jumping as well. He does a, I'll do it in a second there. He does a great kind of Strider-esque sort of... Uh, jump up on the wall and kind of jump off um, which you can use to your advantage uh, again it, it can just it's a little bit different from what you'd expect Batman to have he's got his batarangs which is great um, but he's also got a gun uh, which I don't remember having in the movie it would have been a very very different movie um, oh we're going to draw fists now uh, I'm just going to play this for a little bit a minute or so just to give you a brief taster um, it's actually quite very good. It, it like I said, it, it's very you know, uh, it's a very typical kind of NES platformer. Uh, constantly respawning baddies there. Uh, lots of power ups to pick up. Um, but uh, it's probably you know, uh, it's kind of just a regular platform game with the Batman thing shoehorned onto it. Um, this is gonna really get my ass handed to me here at the moment. But uh, let's see if we can jump up. So we are going to have a quick look next at one of the uh, Ocean games. Now Ocean were a, a publisher on the 8-bit computers, the 16-bit computers, so the uh, the Commodore, the Spectrum, the Amstrad, the Amiga, the Atari and so forth. They specialised in doing movie conversions, but the movie conversions were good, but they uh, tended to be very formulaic in that you had a platform section and maybe a driving section and a puzzle section, maybe a shooting bit or a beat em up. Um, so we're going to load it up now in a second on the Commodore. I will go the Commodore version. Again, this is the Batman, uh, based on the Batman movie. So it, it's a good platformer. Um, kind of wander around shooting bad guys um, and using your grappling hook a lot. Uh, it's kind of a bionic commando style thing, I guess. Um, now what I've done is I've cheated a bit, well I've cheated, in fact you can see I've frozen the time on it here because uh, it's, it's actually very tricky, you're basically running around a maze on a time level, now it's almost a cheat in a way because it's very hard to actually see where you're going to go, uh, a lot of these ocean games are literally knocked up with the same uh, format, a uh, bit of platforming, a bit of racing, the next section of this, once you finish this level you knock uh, Jack Napier, the guy who ends up becoming the Joker, into a vat of acid and then you go off in a driving section and you drive around, um, we'll just catch the end of it now in a second, you drive around uh, trying to find your way back to the Batcave. Okay, we've skipped it there completely. Uh, basically you drive around and you basically take these right turns, it's a little mini GPS system telling you which way to go. It wasn't bad but it got a bit boring after a while. So now this is a kind of little mastermind style thing, uh, puzzle again. Again this is very similar to the Ocean games at the time. Um, try and work out which I think the second one I got two of them right so we'll see if we can get three together you have to uh, 
ocean games very similar. Uh, I remember Total Recall, for example, having a, a platform bit, a beat 'em up bit, a driving bit. I always like the platform bits. I always kind of wish that they uh, they'd stuck with the platforming, you know. Um, but uh, there you go. There's a uh, again a little shooter section here. Uh, I think it used the same part, uh, game engine that the yeah the same engine the uh, the driving section used. Um, Gonna skip ahead now. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and look at the Mega Drive uh, release uh, or Mega Drive Batman game next because again it's something slightly different from the others. Okay, we'll just uh, load up here with a magic of emulation. Um, sadly, I actually own pretty much all these games. Uh, it's a disturbingly large collection of games here. So, uh, little version of the, the Batman music there. So, uh, again, Sunsoft, I think uh, they had the first, at least one or two Batman games, um, or Batman movie rights. So, it's a. Uh, this one is different again. Um, there was a Batman, I'm going to be covering it probably in the next section, but there was a Batman arcade machine as well. But, uh, a lot of them, again, beat em ups. Usually, you know, they'd have a couple of batarangs. You'd have a use of the grappling gun. I think this here somewhere. Like, for the life of me, I can't remember what it's used for in this game because it's been so long since I played it. Uh, some nice graphics there. So, again, uh, I think one of the, the one things you learn from lots of retro gaming is that uh, every film could be condensed into a, a, a beat em up section, a platform section, a driving section, and a puzzle section. Um, I mean, the one of the things I do like about, uh, I mean, I love my retro gaming, but the one of the things I like about laser games is that you had, uh, uh, maybe from the likes of Goldeneye onwards, you know, you had games that, that, that you know, wouldn't capture the whole part, you know, the whole essence of the film, uh, without having to resort to just getting little mini games built based around scenes. Um, still, though, this is a this is this is a fun uh, fun little game. up there. Um, if I remember rightly, uh, what I'll also be looking at, by the way, is the uh, the Mega Drive version, or rather the, the Mega CD version of Batman Returns, because that's a rather nice little game. But uh, here we go, uh, end, of, end of level baddie, uh, and we can just shoot him, <laughs> just shoot him down. Oh, that's not going to work. See if we can get away with a little cheap tactic. No, no, we can't get away with cheap tactics. Just sweeping the leg. Sweep the leg doesn't work. Uh, as you can see, on the things about again, the other thing about retro gaming is you can see the advances AI has made over the years. Uh, well, he's beating me. <laughs> I think all we'll do is we'll sacrifice a life and we'll just shoot him down because uh, you obviously don't want to see me slugging away at one particular uh, bad guy for the rest of this review. So uh, what I'm going to look at... Um, we'll look at last in this section is um, another NES game. This is Revenge of the Joker. Uh, sorry, Return of the Joker. It's Revenge of the Joker if you're in, uh, I think, in the Japanese version. Was Return. Oh no, Japanese version was Dynamite Batman. But uh, again, it could have just jettisoned the game, uh, the, the movie ideas completely and uh, it goes with this kind of really cool Contra, it looks like a crossing Contra and uh, um, Castlevania. They, the, unfortunately, because of the way of emulating this, you can't hear the sound, but it's very Castlevania style music. And basically, yeah, you run along, you shoot crates for uh, lots of uh, fiery goodness and uh, lots of jumping on spiky platforms. And basically, you unleash many kinds of firepower hell on bad guys, uh, the way Batman never did in the comics or uh, movies or anything like that. But it's a great game. Uh, it's a good crack. But um, it's just again, it's one of these situations, and you find this a lot with uh, eight bit gaming. They basically they, they have a game engine and they have a game, and they just lash a, a license onto it, change a few characters around, and uh, there's your Batman game. So Batman Return of the Joker, well worth checking out. Um, probably want to look at eBay because I don't think it's on any of the virtual consoles at the moment. But uh, well worth having a look at. So that's the end of part one. In part two we're going to be looking at some of the 16-bit games and uh, a lot of the Batman Returns stuff and so forth. Um, as always, check out Gamers Ireland for the latest reviews and uh, hopefully some more retro reviews. See you then. Thanks for watching.